Number five. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone learning? What is the fifth key? Are you ready? Engaging the mystery of the communion. The fifth key that is responsible for longevity. Engaging with understanding the mystery of the communion. Engaging the mystery of the communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please, from verse 24. Apostle Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he was now speaking about the Lord's body. We're reading to 30. Please pay attention. And he that had, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 25. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now he begins to warn. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. He says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, it is that serious that it has a spiritual implication. You shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. To 30 now, it says, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, what does it mean to eat and drink unworthily? Without discernment and without revelation and without honor. It says, He eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's read 30 together. One, two, read. For this cause, many are weak, many are sickly among you, and many sleep. He didn't say few. That means there are many people today who have gone to the grave and their offense is that they did not discern the Lord's body. I've had all kinds of teachings and opinions about the communion. I can tell you by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible. The communion with understanding is a deep spiritual mystery. It can be idolized, unfortunately, like it has happened, respectfully speaking, across the body, where people have turned the communion like a, like a charm that does not contain any power. Do you understand? Remember, you are the one who made the bread and you are the one who made the cup and you are now taking it. So it is not that bread and cup that will give you life. There is a revelation that releases the power of God upon those tokens of communion. I am an advocate of the communion, but I am not an advocate of religiosity without revelation. The key is understanding, not ritual. You can be involved in the ritual of the communion and believe me, you will not receive anything from it. Hallelujah. There are people who just carry wafers, just squeeze it or bread. They just squeeze one slice or one loaf and just take tea or take something and believe they took the communion. No. The communion is not about hunger. Remember in the book of the first Corinthians, there were people who were taking it unworthy because at that time it was wine. And Paul found out that people were getting drunk after, you know, the remaining part of the, the, the communion set that they leave when the service is over. Some people were taking it and don't mind all these guys. And Paul had to preach and say, you guys are making a mess of this thing. You can bring damnation upon yourself. There are stories of people who with childlike faith believed in the mystery of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ and they engaged the communion with understanding and it flushed out all kinds of demonic things in their body. You know the power and the mystery of blood. You see, in communicating spiritual truth, it is not really the activity that carries power. It is the understanding that supports what you are doing. Are we together? But I can tell you by the authority of scripture, in my life and based on the experience of the patriarchs and those who have gone ahead of us, the communion with understanding is a deep and powerful mystery. And what you are taking does not have to be color red for it to be communion, even if it is water and wafers. It's, it's a mystery. You just take that to help your mind assimilate and believe. Communion. There are times with understanding you can gather your family and say in the name of Jesus we stand by faith believing in the authority of the word of God and you engage that communion and watch the wonder working power of the blood and body of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me give you two more scriptures. In Exodus chapter 12, let's go to 7 and 8 then we'll jump to 12 and 13. Watch this, the mystery of the blood now. And they shall take of the blood, the angel of death is about to pass over the land of Egypt and strike it on the two side posts on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it verse 8 and they shall eat the flesh that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it jump to verse 12 please for sake of time it says for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord thy God verse 13 it says, and the blood shall be to you for a what? A token 
upon the houses where ye are and when I see the blood I will pass over you and the plague shall not come upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt go to verse 23 verse 23 now it says for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians and when he seared the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses and to smite you the fifth key is engaging the mystery of the communion if someone is with me say amen Please, I want you to pay attention to what I'm teaching you because it contains tremendous power. Tremendous power. Are you ready for number six? We'll soon find somewhere to pray. What is the sixth key that controls longevity? Are you ready? Master the art of spiritual warfare. Master the art of spiritual warfare. Mm, there is a warfare dimension for longevity. Master the art of spiritual warfare. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that Satan and his cohorts using the guise of witchcraft, wizardry, necromancy, sorcery, activities of dark power that he will continually launch attack against the saints. He says, and I will build my church and the gates of hell. Jesus recognized the presence of the gates of hell. Even Jesus is called the head of principalities and powers. The Bible recognizes their existence. It will be child's play to just ignore it and believe that without engaging the world through intelligence, that by default, those arsenals will not come. Even Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and did not find anything. Spiritual warfare. You must know how to take authority over the spirit of death. You must know how to take authority over infirmity, over destructions, over wasters. This is the assignment of spiritual warfare. Let's look at two or three scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 13. Let's start from 17. Ezekiel 13, 17. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people. He says, give us NIV. Give us NIV. I want you to understand what is there. Okay. Son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own imagination. Prophesy against them. Let's hurry up. Next verse. It says, and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to the women who sew magic charms on their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their head in order to ensnare people. Is that in your Bible? It says, woe to these kinds of people. They tie all kinds of things. They get, they fraternize with the realm of the spirit as tokens and mediums to ensnare people. Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own? 19. It says, you have profaned me among my people for a few handfuls of barley and scraps of bread by lying to my people who listen to lies. You have killed those who should not have died and have spared those who should not have lived. 20. It says, therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against your magic charms, which you ensnare people like birds, and I will tear them from your arms. I will set free the people that you have ensnared like birds. Uh-huh. Next verse, please. We are reading down to 23, 21. I will tear off your veils and save my people from your hands, and they will no longer fall prey to your power. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I, I am the Lord. Because you disheartened the righteous with your lies when I had brought them no grief, and because you encouraged the wicked not to turn from their evil ways and so to save their lives. Last verse. Therefore, you will no longer see false visions or practice divination. I will save my people from your hands and then you will know that I am the Lord. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, I, I hate to play with your mind, but believe me when I tell you, there are people on earth who have fraternized with the devil perpetually. Access to divination, access to all kinds of sorcery, necrom necromancy, activities with the constellation, making use of mediums, animals, all against the lives and the destinies of people. This is true. There is victory in Christ, but it is engaged with knowledge. The victory in Christ does not happen arbitrarily. Not even the death on the cross automatically saves sinners until they place their faith by believing in their heart and declaring the lordship of Jesus. That is only when that was the only condition for salvation to be activated. So Jesus has died, risen, exalted, and yet many people still go to hell. That is the same way salvation, healing, deliverance has been purchased. But just believing that because it is finished in Christ, it means it is finished in your life. Without engaging it, it will not happen. What does warfare entail? Number one, standing based on the word of God to enforce your authority. Warfare entails standing 
to enforce your authority based on the word of God, not based on emotions, not based on sentiments, not based on religious chants and rituals. The basis for the believer's victory is what is written, not what I want, not what I wish. There are many chants and rituals that sincerely and respectfully speaking are only a waste of time. The only component in a believer's speaking and prayer that commands power is that which is in line with scripture. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 11. Proverbs 1 11. It says, My son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Next verse. It says, Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. Reading to 16, verse 13. We shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our house with spoil. Look at the wicked imaginations. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. 15. He says, my son, walk down not in the way with them. Refrain from the foot of their path. 16, the last verse. It says, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Believers, please look at me. Spiritual warfare from a biblical standpoint and from a standpoint of victory is necessary for maintaining your longevity. For as long as you live, you remain a candidate for Satan's attack, a potential candidate. The Bible says now, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Are we together? Paul said, I desire to come to you once and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan is still on earth. There, the Bible has never told us that his ministry has ended. Read your Bible. The Bible tells us that victory over him is settled, but the Bible never says Satan has been prohibited from doing the things that he's doing. He still runs to and fro, like a roaring, like, like, like a, uh, what they call it now? That he runs to and fro like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. May he not find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and haven't done all to stand. Stand. Why would Paul be teaching you about the, the warfare armory? Are we together? He says to put the whole armor of God. Remember, it was the same Paul that gave us the exegesis of the, the Pauline epistle. The entire exegesis of redemption. Yet he teaches you that it is true that you are seated, exalted with Christ. But haven't done all to stand. Stand. For many of us, we are not consistent with our prayer. For others, we are consistent with prayer, but from a standpoint of fear and defeat. Listen, you don't pray to make victory happen. You pray to establish victory that is already in Christ. There is a big difference. There is praying and you feel, okay, now let me push a little more and the devil will give way. As emotional as that sounds, you are already defeated. Believe me, except this Bible is not true. Nobody prays from a standpoint of weakness and wins. So spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing, I have taught you, it is not the prayer that produces the victory. The prayer simply transports that which is finished in Christ and stamps it as a reality upon your life. Is it not amazing that Jesus prayed before, during, and even after his resurrection? Today that he's seated, exalted as Lord and Christ, he's still making intercession for the saints. Is he not conscious of his victory over the saints that he's still making intercession? Why will he still be interceding when he said it is finished? The fact that Jesus is still praying for you should let you know that he's aware that Satan is still on earth waging war against the saints. Why would Jesus be interceding for you? He would have said, don't say anything again. Victory is sure. Jesus, the intercessor, proves that evil is still at work. Hallelujah. You must master the art of spiritual warfare. Believers, please hear me. The times that we live in right now, especially if you're a man and a woman of God in ministry, you must pray. You must understand warfare. I'm speaking with respect to longevity, but warfare covers every aspect of your life. You are privileged to lead a ministry. You must pray for your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, protect them. Preserve them. You don't know who is traveling and who is returning. It is your responsibility. Part of your priesthood responsibility is to lift up the people that God has given to you. Listen to what Jesus said. All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost. Lost through what? Various ways. You can ask the Lord, I, believe me, I'm not exaggerating. More than 80% of my prayers is not for myself. Lord, help your people to encounter you. Protect them. Protect them. That was the wisdom of Job. The Bible says Job prayed for his children just in case. Just in case they went out to party and they returned back like madmen. Just in case he prayed. Parents, do you pray for your children or do you just give them money? Leaders, do you pray for the people God has given you? Don't take Satan for granted. It's not about fear. Satan is determined, even over Jesus. 
I hope you know that Satan does not fear. There is no record in scripture that Satan is associated with fear. He flees as a result of an instruction, not fear. Satan is every other thing but fearful and foolish. Two things you cannot attribute to Satan. Hallelujah. Don't sit down and let the devil destroy your health and your life. One month you find out that something is beginning to happen to you. You got up in the morning and your legs is as if you cannot walk. Later by evening, it looks like it's your back. The next day you find out all four children, you, you go to your office and find out files are getting missing. These are signs. Don't sit down until it gets complicated and destroys you. From its infancy, you attack it in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. This is a semblance of hell and darkness. Therefore, I stand by the authority that is in the Lord Jesus Christ and I, I rebuke this. It is your kingdom responsibility to understand warfare. There are some of you right now, the darkness that seems to be to be roaming around your life i'm praying for you that you will have the grace to wake up and take responsibility i have a responsibility to pray for you but pray for me pray for me has landed many people to their grave you must take responsibility as god grants you grace wake up in the night especially when the seasons are already giving you a sign that this is the devil attacking you abide with me fast falls the even tide the darkness deepens lord with me abide when all the help has fall and comfort flee help of the helpless oh abide with me jesus when it was time for him to get to the cross he took out time to pray he prayed to build stamina he prayed father if it be thy will take this cup of me nevertheless not my will but yours be done let me give you the last one and then we pray is someone learning the seventh key as revealed from scripture that controls longevity is walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13 proverbs 3 13 we're reading down to 18 happy is the man that findeth wisdom koinonia please look up and the man that getteth understanding next verse please he said for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold 15 she is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her 16 now length of days there you find it again with wisdom length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor the bible says collect both the right and the left hands are open for you as far as wisdom is concerned wisdom is a giver don't collect wealth and riches and live length of days 17 reading to 18 now her ways are the ways of pleasantness all her parts are peace she is a tree of life a tree of what life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retained her listen there is a very direct relationship between working in wisdom and longevity for instance paying attention to your health is wisdom paying attention to your health revelations 22 please give it to us verse 2 paying attention to your health what you eat the bible says and in the midst of the street and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations let me tell you believers there are times that you may do everything well and kill yourself simply because of carelessness and lack of wisdom there are many people today this is the balance because people focus on the spirituality of longevity and then they forget the other aspects like that which pertains onto their health i showed you our medical stand we have an intelligent team of medical doctors and even though we are a ministry that believes in signs and wonders there has been an advocacy for a long time in the body of Christ as in a bid to demonstrate the excellency of the divine life which is true subliminally we men of God have programmed members and programmed people into rejecting anything that has to do with medicine or the science of wellness. We have thrown it away and said it does not matter. The Bible says man shall live by two things. One, bread. Two, words. There is the physical aspect. There is the spiritual aspect. Man does not live by words alone. And man does not live by bread alone. If your words are correct and your bread is wrong, you will die. If your bread is correct and the words are wrong, you will die. Both bread and words have to be in place. This is Jesus teaching now. Are we together now? 
for many of us who have done well the words are correct the spiritual investments are correct but my goodness there is death in the pot in fact let's go to that scripture death in the pot elijah let me search for it now death in the pot it, second kings 4 from verse 38 second kings 4 38 and elisha came to gilgal and there was death in the land famine now and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said unto his servant um can you give us niv again let me make reference to niv i just want your understanding right he says he said to his servant put on a large pot and cook some stew for this man reading to 41 next verse one of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine whatever that is we know it is not good he found a wild vine. He gathered some of its gods and filled the fold of his cloak. When he returned, he caught them into the pot of stew. Though no one knew what they were. 40. The stew was poured out for the men, but as they began to eat, remember they were prophets too, they cried out, O oh man of God, there is death in the pot. How many pots today have death in it? There are many pots in restaurants that have death. There are many pots in our homes. You think it is food you are eating. The prophet said death is not only found in the grave. It can be found even in the pot. You can cast the one in the grave. But have you casted the death that is in the pot? And they could not eat it. 41. Elisha said get some flour. And he put it into the pot and said serve it to the people to eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen, can I be honest with you? There are many, many believers. And the unfortunate thing is that because largely in Africa and Nigeria, we come from a background of deprivation. Please listen. When God begins to bless us, the first thing we focus on is getting exterior things to prove that our life is working rather than focusing on our health. So chances are excellent that when things begin to work out, you want to get a car, you want to get a house, you want to get a nice cloth. And people say, my God, things are changing in your life. And then we punish ourselves dying inside and looking at life outside there are many people who are careless over their bodies and their health today and sincerely they have the power to invest just a little in their health there are many believers who hate medical checkup they say no this is demonic there are many believers i've told you that science and medical people would tell us that many diseases would have been solved if the people were attentive enough to detect it at infancy and to deal with it most people resort to medicine as a last resort i have taught you here ladies and gentlemen and for some of you who may be hearing it for the first time medicine is not anti-spirituality my perspective of medicine i hope you know that luke was a doctor he was the disciple of jesus dr luke hallelujah it's true that jesus rose up from the dead but what about those who took care of his body for three days the body did not just lie down in the cold on the cross someone wrapped the woman said she came to clean the body so there is a place for medicine listen listen if you don't believe this you will you will rubbish yourself it is true that divine health and healing is real don't get me wrong but remember it is a journey of transition in the spirit to attain onto that point where you can walk in health and experience and while you are on that journey by the time you are afflicted and you pray and it looks like nothing is happening ladies and gentlemen even if something is happening it is wise to consult the doctors if you are truly healed medicine will not fight your miracle <laughs> hallelujah there are people dying in silence your heart is palpitating you almost cannot you can't climb the stairs you don't know what is wrong at least let them tell you what is wrong then you can now choose if you want to go the path of faith you are not going on blind faith hallelujah yes madam you try to conceive once twice three times it looks like it's not working don't just sit down and say i know it is a demon in my spirit. go and see a doctor have a discussion let them find out what is wrong then if it defines medicine that's why god put both the doctors and us respectfully speaking i tell you believers are very careless over their health very very careless hallelujah there are many of us who continue to eat all kinds of things including overeating I respect your perspective about food but let me give you an honest advice even if fasting did not have any spiritual reward I can tell you ask anybody fasting eating every day anytime anytime you see food is lost you have to repent the name of that lost is gluttony and it kills it kills hallelujah and by the way let me tell you don't say I am not very fat it doesn't mean you are free it doesn't mean you are free hear what I'm saying now so don't get into that deception that until you look like you are you have weight and then mm -mm. there are many people who are about dying diabetes 
all kinds of things kidney failure different troubles in their bodies and they don't care until the day they collapse for some of you by this teaching you may need to go and do a medical checkup what are you afraid of do a medical checkup if they say you are fine has that not strengthened your faith hallelujah pay attention to the kind of water you drink as God grants you grace pay attention to the kind of food you eat Many of us, you see food that is already beginning to spoil. Plus, Jesus might not say that. Amen. You just warm it in the microwave and death in the pot. You want to find out more about nutrition? Don't, I'm not the person to, there are many people who are gifted and graced. Go to the medical stand. They will guide you. It is not seen to be under very good organic supplements. They can help you. Many of these things we keep taking and feeling like we are rich. It is death. Minimize some of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And more than minimizing these things, please, I impart upon you the grace to fast. Even if you don't want to pray, just fast and sleep with no food. It is still a level of liberty you are administering to your body. Hallelujah. There are people who will never drink up to one bottle of water in a day. They will drink five bottles, Sprite, Coca-Cola, any other one. And you see people in a restaurant, four wraps of swallow, and three kinds of soup half of chicken only you and then three bottles and then one tiny pure water you are this is death I, I i i hate to be a bearer of bad news but i owe you a responsibility to tell you it is not the manifestation of wealth and we have all kinds of cultural things i suffered now is my time you you, you want to live long remember the last key walking in wisdom please laugh but pay attention laugh but pay attention hallelujah Love, but pay attention. And you know, in many cultures, the proof of honor is food. The proof of honor is what? So one person can visit five families between 12 to 6. And everywhere he goes, you went here, they gave you yam. You just went to say hi to the other neighbor, there's pounded yam. Then the other one, there's rice. The other one, there's fish. And you ate all. Appa. The leaves are for the healing of the nations. I don't know about you, but this man standing before you by the grace of God is still here for a long time. As far as the program of God demands, not out of fear. Do not die the death of a fool through carelessness. Let me encourage you again. Listen, do you know between age zero and age 20, there is a biological strategy for your feeding and for your living. Between age 20 to 40, there is a formula. Between 40 and 50, 60, there is a formula. There are things your body doesn't want. You say, I'm a youth. You, are, you can be a youth in your mind. But as far as the length of days is concerned, time is going. And you need to begin to adjust yourself through maturity. And don't bring death to yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. I repeat again. There's miracle service coming. But ladies and gentlemen, for some of you, you need to go and begin to examine yourself. Is it death that is happening to me? Leave the issue of the dreams and the rest. We're praying. But what could be the issue right now? Why is it that I'm a young man of 25, yet I cannot breathe well? I climb the stairs, just fall, fall stairs up, and I'm already breathing. What is wrong? Please help me. Could it be the... Okay, just do some exercise. Take care of yourself. What could be the problem? Maybe you are not taking water. Cardiovascular issues have killed more people. Maybe even than demons. I impart upon you grace to walk in wisdom supernatural grace to walk in wisdom supernatural grace to walk in wisdom another example of walking in wisdom is walking with the wise hallelujah now i'm not challenging your opinion but let me tell you the truth things like drinking and smoking and all of these vices where you dump all kinds of junk into your body you are killing yourself you are killing yourself very fast not even slowly apostle it does not matter it's your life but you see, in taking decisions, it is wicked and selfish to not think about your children and not think about those connected to you as you take decisions. Are we together now? Yes. There are many people today who through their carelessness, they have left liabilities for society simply because they were not thoughtful enough. Any major decision you are about to take in life, especially your health, I want you to think about all those who are connected to you. What will happen now if I die? Some of you, for instance, you came from non-Christian families and you are the only Christian who is holding the banner of the gospel while waiting for the younger ones to grow. If you are careless with your life and you pass on now, what becomes of them? When you are thoughtful, you will not be careless with your life and your body. 
What happens to you now if you pass on, leaving three or four children who are barely in primary school? It was not an attack that killed you, just carelessness with your health. Let me tell you this. My deliverance over this issue of health came. I've shared it with you. At the end of the year, when I'm doing my personal retreats, I gauge my progress against many indices. My spiritual growth, mental transformation, health and wellness, relationships, finances, purpose, and all of that. And for three years consecutively, I found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health. For very justifiable reasons. I could travel for a meeting, return back in the night, return back. I had to make up my mind to say, Mr. Man, if you die and you kill yourself, let it be known to you that you killed yourself. Because I know that God loves me sincerely. He has invested his love and his jealousy upon my life. And I made up my mind. I said, no more. Even if it is one step at a time, I will begin to correct it. This is a prophetic word for someone right now. And for somebody, the truth is you have the means. God has helped you. It's time to be serious. He that walks with the wise shall be wise. You are in a house where there's smoke, carbon monoxide all the time, and you are just inhaling this with your children. You have the money to move to a better place. Please get out of that place for the sake of the safety of your children. You are in a room. There is a jerry can of kerosene. There is a jerry can of petrol next to your bed. Your nose is directly touching the, the petrol while you are sleeping, and you have 5 million naira, 10 million naira in your account. When you die, what is going to happen to the money? We need to learn to be wise. I've told you the purpose of resources is for efficiency and time redemption. Don't pile millions and billions in your account and be cutting short your days because of selfishness greed you have a car of 20 30 million lying down in your house and you cannot put hundred thousand naira to invest in your health it is not wise I'm sorry if I'm harsh we're wrapping up but I need to say this I rather have a car of 1 million naira part and have a body of 1 billion naira health wise it was a wise bargain you can't be having cars and houses, estates and mansions, and then to invest in your health is a problem. There are many people who cannot spend 20,000 naira. They can go to a restaurant, a priority restaurant, and spend 500,000 in a moment, just proving a point, but for their health. It is often said that health is wealth. A dying man has the desire to get his health back, not his businesses back, not the estates back. One of the greatest contributions you can make in a life, let me tell you, is helping them to know God and love God and helping them to live healthy. As much as possible when you are buying birthday gifts for people, try it. Concentrate on their health. Don't buy things you know they will not use. Hallelujah. You see someone whose, whose leg is, is tiny like this, you, buy, you go and waste your money and buy a shoe of over 1 million size 45. That person is not even going to use it. Are we together? You can get health products, you can invest, fruits, veggies. You can even buy a book about living in health and give the person. You have invested in that person's life. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, I will be healthy. It's a, it's a determination. I will be healthy. I will be healthy. Because there is a lot to do for the kingdom. And I know how I stretch myself by reason of the work that I do. Most people see me and say, Apostle, do you rest? I, I may not rest every day. But I've been able to squeeze out a system and at least it's working. Hallelujah. So when you try to call, maybe in the middle of the night, and you say, Apostle, you told us you'll be there for us. Remember, I am resting. Remember, I am resting. Because believers have a way of blackmailing you spiritually. They just come up with all kinds of emotions and say, remember, you said, I said I will be there for you. Jesus, who said you'll be there for you? Why didn't you quarrel here? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'll be there for you as much as possible. But when I'm, when I'm resting, I'm resting. It's as simple and honest as that. Gone are the days where people shout and say, you are this and start sending you scriptures and say, listen, the Bible says a shepherd that cannot... Just delete it and rest, please. Allow people to... No. You, should, you should be secured enough to not be bullied by all those, those childish things. You see, when you walk yourself and stretch yourself and don't rest and you die, let me tell you what people will say. Hey, yeah. Uh, and that's the end of it I made this mistake when we started newly I would walk myself and not rest my deliverance came when I went to a Catholic cathedral I saw a crucifix and it occurred to me that I didn't die for any man now I love people don't get me wrong but it was not my face that was on that crucifix so I will be there for everybody as much as I can
There are pastors and leaders who have thrown their families in disarray, thrown their health in disarray, thrown their finances in disarray, all in a bit to serve people who will largely not be grateful. Love people, but don't be a fool. In the name of Jesus.